to the Next Gen Conservative Radio Network. You are about to enter the Analysis Zone, where political correctness is non-existent, non-existent. where critical thinking skills are required, required, and conservative common sense reigns supreme. Reign supreme. And now, broadcasting live from Next Gen Conservative Central Command, it's the Whitfield Analysis. And your host is Sam Whitfield. Good evening, folks, and welcome to the Whitfield Analysis. I'm Sam Whitfield, broadcasting live from Next Gen Conservative Studios, right here in Colorado, the great state of Colorado. All right, folks, so let's get down to it, shall we? A lot of you have been uh, sending me tweets and emails about you basically want to know what I think of Chris Dorner. And I've pretty much established this among my uh, conservative friends, such as Caden Cowger, Jimmy Z, uh, Gregory Blackie, other ones, uh, Jason Feely. All of the people in the commentary circles, uh, in the conservative commentary circles, know my thoughts on Chris Dorner. He is a cop killer. He's scum. He's evil, and I'm glad he's dead. Now, most of you are going to be a little perplexed by what I'm about ready to say, but In all fairness, I do think that the issues that he brought up were valid. The point about corruption inside the Los Angeles Police Department. He had every right to be upset with the LA Police Department. And he would have garnished my respect a lot more had he went through the proper channels. Now, I have the manifesto of Christopher Dorner up on my screen right now. And I read through it. I posted through the manifesto. I posted the manifesto a little while ago on my Twitter feed. It's on my Fox LA. Um, if you want to read, I'll have the link included in the, uh, description for those of you who are listening to this as a podcast later on. But folks, um, I just have to say that this Chris Dorner guy is, wow. As I said, I think he's scum. His actions are condemnable. I think he had valid complaints, but I think he blew, he blew all form of respect, at least that I had for him, when he went out and killed those two innocent people. Even if they were part of his vendetta, it wasn't justified. And stop comparing this guy to Batman or something. Because I know that there are a couple of you guys out there who are saying, Oh, oh, this guy is... He's like Batman, yo. He's like a crime fighter who... Is fighting the system and all this cool crap. No, no, folks, he's not. He's a scumbag. 
He's absolutely a scumbag, and he will remain a scumbag. Anyway, folks, um, so enough of my blabbing on imitations and whatnot. Let me read to you the actual manifesto. Now, the manifesto I'm going to have to cut down a lot. Um, but... The, about the first four or five paragraphs, this manifesto, folks, is long. Which is why I posted it to my Twitter feed, at SamW underscore and you see. Uh, follow me there. He ba In the first paragraph, he basically goes on to say, I'll, I'll read the first paragraph for you. Just... Just to give you guys a little headway, uh, but the background on this thing you should read for yourself. His story is, like I said, I can understand his frustration with the police department corruption. I really can. But I can't justify his actions that I cannot do. And you'll see... In... We'll get into his personality later in the manifesto, which is what I'm going to read to you. The personality part. Who he praises, who he worships, what his opinions are. Anyway, going on the first paragraph, though. Just to make it easy for you folks, I'll start the, this off because that's the type of guy I am. <clears throat> so this is from Chris Dorner's manifesto. This is the first paragraph. Um... <clears throat> I know most of you who personally know me are in disbelief to hear from media reports that I am suspected of committing such horrendous murders and have taken drastic and shocking actions in the last couple days. You are saying to yourself that this is completely out of character of the man you knew who always wore a smile wherever he was seen. I know I will be vilified by the LAPD and the media, Unfortunately, this is a necessary evil that I do not enjoy but must partake in complete for substantial change to occur within the LAPD and, and reclaim my name. So right there, folks, first paragraph, we're already seeing him justify cold-blooded murder. Let's continue. The department has... The department has not cons has not changed since the Rampart and Rodney King days. It has gotten worse. The consent decree should have never been lifted. The only thing that has evolved from the consent decree is those officers involved in the Rampart scandal and the Rodney King incidents have since prom have since been promoted to supervisor commanders and command staff in executive positions. There's a typo in there. I would just like to point out that there is a typo that he forgets the Ben and Ben promoted, so it just says since have promoted. And yet this guy thinks he has excellent grammar. Yeah. Anyway, uh we're going to scroll oh, okay, third paragraph is important too, to my point. So he says that he's doing this all to clear to clear his name. Right. Third paragraph. A name is more than just a noun, verb, or adjective. It's your life. Your legacy, your journey, sacrifices, and everything you've worked hard for every day of your life as, a, as, as an adolescent, young adult, and adult. Don't let anybody tarnish it when you know you live up to your own set of ethics and personal ethos all right scrolling down he goes on a lot to what happened to him and um then he was the names of 
where he grew up and whatnot. And then he goes um, more into detail about his story. All right. Okay, here's where it gets interesting. We're about in the sixth or seventh paragraph. This is a long manifesto, folks. But anyway, well, let me just check that. There are, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, we're on the 12th paragraph, folks. Sorry about that. Okay. Oh, let's see. Oh, he blames the LAPD for losing all his relationships, too, in the 11th paragraph. I just thought I'd point that out real quick. You guys should really read this manifesto for yourselves. It's interesting, but I'm going to skim through it, and I'm doing this partially because of the limited amount of time. I only have 30 minutes total to broadcast this, at least in this hour. Um, but then you should also just read it for yourselves. Oh, and I have a point to make, too, which reading this entire manifesto uh, would get in the way of that. Anyway, um, he's, so, 12th paragraph. Um, I'm not an aspiring rapper. I'm not a gang member. I'm not a dope dealer. I don't have multiple babies' mamas. I'm an American by choice. I'm a son. I'm a brother. I'm a military service member. I'm a man who has, who has lost complete faith in the system. When the system betrayed, when the system betrayed, slandered, and, and labeled me, I lived a good life, and though not a religious man, I, only st I always stuck to my own personal code of ethics, ethos, and always stuck to my shoreline in true north. I didn't need the U.S. Navy to instill honor, courage, and commitment in me, but I thank them for reinforcing enforcing it. It's in my DNA. Not anymore, you scumbag. Ahem, next paragraph. Luckily, I don't, I don't have to live every day like most of you. Concerned if the misconduct you were a part of is going to be discovered, looking over your shoulder, scurrying at every phone call from internal affairs or from the captain's office, Wondering if that is the day PSB comes after you for this, for the suspects you struck when they were cuffed months, years ago, or that $500 you pocketed from a narcotics dealer, or when the, uh, when the other guys on your watch beat a, tra a transient nearly to death and you never reported the you off to the supervisor. No, I don't have that concern. I stood up for what was right, but unfortunately have dealt with the repercussions of doing the right thing, and now losing my name and everything I ever stood for. You effers knew Evans was guilty of kicking with a Gettler with excessive force, and you did nothing but get rid of what you saw at the problem. The whistleblower. The whistleblower. Gettler himself stated on videotape, Provided for the BOR and the transcripts, he was kicked, and even his father stated, stated that he, stated that his son said he was kicked by Evans when he was released by custody. The video was played for the entire BOR to hear. Uh, Tingrides, Eisenberg, and Martel all heard it. You're going to see what a whistleblower can do. When you take everything from from him, escape, especially his name. Alright, so this guy, basically, 
He's swearing vengeance on all these cops. However corrupt these officers may be, ladies and gentlemen. Making death threats to them? You really think that's going to clear their name? Yeah, right. Let's just make sure we're good on time here. Still, we have about 14 minutes. I think I think I can um, get this done in that time. We'll have to see, though. Uh, this may go into part two. And I'm going to need at least one commercial break to play Jimmy Z's promos. Anyway, um... Okay, so that was the 12th, going to the 14th paragraph. Self-preservation is no longer important to me. I do not fear death as I died long ago on, on, on January 2nd, 2009. I was told by my mother that sometimes bad things happen to good people. I refuse to accept that. It's what your mother told you, Chris, is true. Bad things do happen to good people. Unfortunately, you can never, you could never accept that. Listen, my heart goes out to you wherever you may be. You're probably in hell now, but if you're in purgatory or wherever, my heart goes out out for your. My heart goes out for your pain. But what you did was unforgivable. Let me just say that again. Scrolling down. People live, who live in glass houses should not throw stones. How ironic that you utilize a fixed glass structure at your command, HQ. He's talking about Chief Beck now. You, you use as a luminous building to symbolize that you're transparent, have nothing to hide or suppress when in, eth when in essence concealing, omitting, and obscuring is your forte. Chief Beck, this is when you need to have that come, come to Jesus talk with Sergeant Teresa Evans and everyone else involved in the conspiracy to have me terminated for doing the right thing. You also need to speak with her, Attorney Rico, and his convention with the BLR members, and her confession of guilt and kicking Mr. Geller. I'll be writing, I'll be waiting for a public response at a press conference. When the truth comes out, the killing stops. Again, resorting to murder in order to get rid of corruption. That's not how we do things. And yes, I am a pro sick amendment conservative. But folks, we still have a system. And this guy is not killing criminals either. He's not killing rapists and murderers. I'm actually okay with that. But you do not kill fellow officers, however you, however corrupt they may be. I have family members who are cops. And believe me, IA, internal affairs, if you screw up, IA will be all over your ass. That's how this guy should have tried once more. He should have leaked this story to the media. To, he should have leaked this story to Breitbart.com, actually. I mean, they're investigative journalists. They would have listened to his story. They would have vetted the LAPD for corruption. I'm serious. This guy should have done journalism. Anyway, it's too late for that now. Next paragraph. Why didn't you charge me with filing a false police department when I came forward stating Evans kicked Mr. Christopher Geller? You filed you filed criminal charges against every other officer who is accused and terminated for filing a false police report. 
you did it because you knew I was innocent and a criminal court would find me innocent and expose your department for suppressing the tr truth and retaliation. That's why. The attacks will stop when the department states the truth about my innocence publicly. I will not accept any type of currency, goods, in exchange for the attacks to stop. Nor do I want it. I want my name back. Period. There is no negotiation. I'm not this. I'm not the State Department who states that they do not negotiate with terrorists, because anybody with a secret or TSSCI. Okay. Um. Okay, he uses a bunch of military terms. The, de the department has not cha changed from the Darrell Gates and Mark Furman days. Those officers are still employed and have all been promoted to command staff and supervisor positions. I will correct this here. Are you aware that, that an officer, a rookie probationer at the time, seen on the Rodney King video I'm striking Mr. King's multiple times with a baton on three three ninety one is still employed by the uh, by the LAPD is now a captain on the police department. Captain Ronaldo Solando is now the commanding officer of an LA of an LAPD police station, West LA Divi Divi Division. As a commanding officer, he is now responsible for over 200 officers. Do you trust him to enforce department policy and investigate use of force and in investigations on arrestees by his officers? Are you aware that Evans has since promoted has since been promoted to sergeant after kicking Mr. Gowan in the face? Oh. Oh, you violated a citizen's civil rights. Well, we will promote you. Same as you did with the L. Same as LAPD did with the officers from Metro involved in the May Day Mall at MacArthur Park. They promoted them to sergeant, a supervisor role. Okay, folks. Uh, let's take a... Let's take a break here real quick, shall we? <sighs> Boy, this Christopher Gettler guy is... Amazing. I don't know how else to put it, folks. I really don't know how to put it. Anyway, let's take a break here real fast, shall we? You're listening to the Whitfield Analysis on Next Gen Conservative Radio. Be right back for the end of this segment. We're going to do a second segment. Don't worry. This is taking longer than I expected. Anyway, be right back. Listening to the Next Gen Conservative Radio Network. Let's say you're worried about the direction the country is heading. Go to your computer and click on thejimmyzshow.com. Play today's show, and just like that, you know more than you did before. As you listen and click some of the links in the show notes, you feel empowered. Optimism follows, and you know just what to do. The Jimmy Z Show, conservative talk radio at thejimmyzshow.com. Hi, Jimmy Z here, inviting you to listen to The Jimmy Z Show at thejimmyzshow.com. Conservative politics with humor, irreverence, and colored by my Christian faith. 
On demand, 24-7 with new shows every Monday through Friday. The Jimmy Z Show. Hated by the left for all the right reasons. Tune in anytime, day or night at thejimmyzshow.com. I'm Barack Obama and I approve this message. The left tries to deny him, but they quite simply can't. It's Sam Whitfield, helping to lead a new age of conservative talk on Next Gen Conservative Radio. Good evening, folks, and welcome back. By the way, I've gotten many questions about whether or not... Some people tend to think that my intro is uh, that I ripped it from uh, Burn It to the Ground by a Nickelback. And, uh... No, that's not the case. The intro was, uh... My intro and bumpers were made, uh, by the fabulous man known as, uh, Jimmy Z from the Jimmy Z Show. Uh, Jimmy's a... Jimmy's a longtime radio host, and, um... He's the host of the Jimmy Z Show at thejimmyzshow.com. Uh, you just heard me play his ads during the commercial break, both of them. Um, folks, he also does, um, he can also create bumpers, advertisements, uh, themes for your radio show or small business or whatever you need. Um, I'm so impressed, um, with his work. I agreed to do this promotion for him. Now, Jimmy being the stand-up guy he is, he and I made a deal. Go. Here's what I want you to do. If you're a small business owner, or if you're a radio show host, like I am, and you need theme music, an ad, bumpers, or whatever else have you, go to the uh, go to the JimmyZShow.com. Email Jimmy. Jay-Z at the Jimmy Show dot com. In your email you can put like show theme or uh audio work, which is what that's what I did. And uh, just write him a message, tell him who you are. Um his services are excellent folks. Um my his all of his music and all of his bumpers, all of his advertisements, whatever you need, are high quality work. He only charges a hundred dollars for audio work, which is rare in today's uh radio business. Trust me, I know. Anyway, folks, um Jimmy, when you email him, describe to him what you want, and then Here's what I'm going to do for you, folks. Jimmy's an awesome guy, so he and I agree to this. If you mention my name, Sam Whitfield, from Next Gen Conservative, in your email, he usually charges charges $100 for his services. Still a great deal. But if you mention my name, Jimmy is going to take off $20 off of your purchase Any work you need, he's going to take it off. When you mention my name, Sam Whitfield. That's $80 for audio work, folks. For a theme song, bumper, whatever you need. Heck, he'll he'll do all three. And it's a package deal. It's great. He is my guy for my audio work, and I trust him. Anyway, tell him Sam Whitfield sent you. We'll be right back in the next segment. Listening to the Next Gen Conservative Radio Network. <laughs> 